this is the Neo, or rather, this is the Neo, an incredibly small and lightweight new camera drone from DJI. The million dollar question though is who or what is this thing for? Is it for children or is it for adults? Would it make a good present for someone? Is it for hobbyist filmmakers and photographers or is it for professionals? In fact, I think this is a drone everyone needs and this is why. Until now, there have only been three different types of droner, or dronist, or dronut, or whatever else you might call people who fly drones. There are those who buy them as a toy, then there are drone enthusiasts who enjoy flying or filming with them, and finally professionals use them as a tool for making films or inspecting power lines, that sort of thing. I'm sure there's a Venn diagram to be had here somewhere. But drones have not so far become ubiquitous, and there are two reasons for that. Firstly, you've got to learn how to fly them, which immediately takes my mum out of the equation. And Mrs Gadget, for that matter. Secondly, unless you're an enthusiast or a professional, you probably don't have a regular need for something which takes aerial photographs or film footage. Well, this little thing changes all that. You don't need to learn how to fly it, and everyone will have a use for it. So first things first, out of the box, the Neo just comes with one battery, and that's it. But that's all it needs to perform its biggest party trick, which is to take off from your hand, fly around filming you, and then come back and land on your hand again. It really is that simple. So simple that my real mum could do it. And here she is, flying the drone. I never saw that day coming. Now you can set how this thing will fly by selecting one of five quick shots on the top of the drone. There's the droney, which will make the Neo fly backwards and up. Then there's circle mode, which will make it fly around you. Rocket mode makes it go straight up for an overhead perspective, which is certainly not my best angle these days. Follow mode does what it says on the tin, and spotlight mode will make it hover in one place, but track you and your movement. Now, of course, most normal people, which is to say anyone over the age of about 20, isn't going to have much interest in filling their phone with film footage of themselves. But that's not what this is really for. What it is, is without doubt the easiest way to get a group photo, or rather a group video. At a stroke, DJI has solved the age-old problem of who's going to take the shot. Until this thing came along, you'd either have to hand over your probably unlocked one and a half billion pound iPhone to a complete stranger, or one of your group has to step out of the shot and take the picture. Which is a bit of a bummer for them. Pop this in your pocket. Look, it's small enough. Take it with you when you go out with your mates and you can spin it up in, well, around 10 seconds. There we go. I'll just wait for the red light to go out. And we're off. Two meters, Three, two, one. And now you can just let it take the shot for you. Hey! And here are a couple of shots I took earlier of a group of us that cycle together at the weekends. Now, a couple of tips. For the group shot, I think the droney is the best quick shot to use. In fact, I don't think it should be called a droney at all. It should be called a groupie. Secondly, remember that this thing is going to keep the lens pointed at you. So when you're taking a group shot, make sure you stand in the middle or it'll miss half the group. Now, even if you never want to fly this thing yourself, you will want to download the free app that comes with it, because it allows you to set the flight parameters for each of the quick shots. So, for example, you can set the droney shot to pull back anywhere from about six foot level with you to about 32 foot climbing higher in the sky. In circle mode, you can set the radius of the circle from about six and a half feet all the way out to 65 feet. 
And in rocket mode, you can set it to climb to a minimum of 13 foot, all the way up to 33 foot. Lastly, in follow mode, you can tell it to follow you from close up, which is about six foot away, or from afar, which is more like about 12 foot away. And then either follow you from a low perspective, level, or above most people's eye lines, about seven foot off the ground. The app also unlocks a couple more quick shots, one of which is the helix, which is a climbing circle, and the other is the boomerang, which is a kind of angled oval. Finally, there's direction track, which will make the drone follow you from the side, or in front, which is quite useful for vloggers like having a second cameraman. With all the settings though, it is important to be aware of your surroundings. You don't want to set this thing up to fly a 65 foot circle in your 10 foot garden. You'll also want to use the app if you want to take group photographs. Now it would be nice if the Neo did a droney up to a certain height and distance and then automatically took the shot, but for the moment it doesn't. So there are two ways of taking photos. You can either select the spotlight mode and then move back, I'd say about 15 feet. And then when you stop moving for three seconds, it'll take a picture every three or four seconds automatically. Remember that the Neo will stay at the height you launch it at. So if you want a high shot, you'll need to hold it as high as you can, keeping your face in view of the lens. Alternatively, you can use the remote control in the app to fly the Neo back and take the shot. That does give you more control over the framing of the shot because you can see it on the iPhone, but then you do have to press the shutter button on the iPhone to get the shot. So it'll always be a photograph of you holding an iPhone. There is one other small limitation when flying manually with the app, which is that you can't control the vertical angle of the camera. And that means you can only take a group shot from roughly the same height as the subject. I think these days I prefer short videos for group shots anyway. They do capture the moment so much better than a still photo. And it also eliminates the frustration of finding out that out of the 57,000 photos you took, there isn't a single one where at least one member of the group has their eyes shut or looks like a goldfish because they were talking to the person on their left. So what about the picture quality? Well, if you search the internet, you'll find lots of people moaning that the picture quality is not very good. And for sure, the footage is over-sharpened and can be oversaturated, by which I mean the colors are a bit too strong, especially in low light. And because the camera in this thing is really not much bigger than a bit of dandruff, the resulting images and footage do degrade a bit when viewed on the big screen, or if you zoom in to crop the image. But uncropped on an iPhone or a tablet, which is where most people are likely to view short film clips and videos, it's absolutely fine. It's better than fine, actually. It's great. By way of comparison, here's a shot I took with the Neo versus the same shot taken with a six-year-old iPhone 8. You can see that the stuff coming out of the Neo is over-sharpened and the iPhone footage is softer and nicer to look at, but in this case, it's the iPhone that looks over-saturated. So what else do you need to know about this little thing for getting group shots? Well, it has a claimed flight time of around 17 minutes, which I find is good for about 20 to 30 quick shots. So it does depend on whether it's flying in a six foot circle or 65 foot circles. It stores your pictures on a 22 gigabyte drive in the drone itself, which is good for about 40 minutes of 4K footage. Then you can either download your shots to the DJI Fly app via Wi-Fi, where you can edit and share them on social media, or you can connect the drone to your iPhone, your iPad, or your computer with a USB cable and transfer the files across that way. Now, the other important thing about the Neo is that it weighs next to nothing. It's 135 grams to be precise, and the propellers are completely enclosed. So there's literally no chance that you're gonna blind a passerby or maim one of your friends if you fly this straight into their head on a stag or a hen night. Oh, and it's rated to fly in winds of up to 18 miles an hour, which is pretty breezy. Although because it's so light, video footage will start looking a bit choppy in that kind of wind. So there we have it, the ideal camera for taking quick group photos. Who else is it for? Well, I think for £169, it's a great toy for a child. 
and they can fly it around indoors without much chance of damaging anything. It is quite a noisy little thing, though, which might drive you slightly mad, although possibly less than a drum kit. And who else? Well, having said that the picture quality is fine, and it is for snaps and clips you're going to watch on an iPhone or an iPad, it's not really good enough for an enthusiast or professional photographers and filmmakers who may want to be able to crop their footage or make stuff for the bigger screen. It's a trade-off. I might use footage shot on one of these on one of my gadget reviews, but only if it was the only way of getting the shot. For example, if I wanted to film really close to other people safely, or if I wanted a camera to follow me and I didn't have a cameraman. In fact, I think following is the other big use case for this thing. Now, normally, I would say the only thing I want less than a selfie is a selfie of my arse. But I definitely take this little thing skiing or cycling. It really is remarkably good at following without hitting things. And even if it does, there's likely no harm done. Now, much has also been made of the fact that you can, if you want, control this drone using a remote control or fly it first person view with a pair of goggles. But for most people, a remote control really isn't going to bring much to the party, and the Neo with the goggles and a controller is going to set you back £449, which I think is starting to look a bit expensive for what you can do with it. No, I think if you're going to buy one of these things, and you really should, you really just want to get the basic model with none of the extras. No remote control, no goggles, no nothing. Just £169, pop it on your hand and let it go and do its thing. On that score, I think the final word in this film must go to a friend of mine who came round the other day to see what the Neo can do. Her reaction was the same as everyone else I've shown this little thing to. F*** me.